ECS. This is not a new design pattern, but actually is taking always more popularity in the game development field. Actually, the most important, the most, the biggest uh, engine in the market are using the object-oriented approach, but uh, they are trying to uh, shifting or at least for um, provide some ECS functionality. But before to understand why it's nice uh, create an engine using ECS, let's try to understand what uh, implement an object-oriented engine mean. And well, you have to know that to, thanks to object-oriented, you can create a software that is able to represent uh, things of real world, for example, a pen or a pencil, so you represent the exact object and also they can uh, can belong to some families which they can share some functionalities with their parents and so on thanks to this uh, approach is possible to see that uh, with object oriented you can structuring your software uh, in uh, a way similar to a tree where uh, all the objects can be uh, put one on top to the other in order to provide some functionality. And this is nice because when you have to maintain the application, uh, it's easier uh, to understand the exact concept behind it because uh, you are at least representing your, the engine uh, with uh, at the same structure which you see uh, the things in the real world because you are moving the same concept of classification in real world inside the programs. But on the other hand, this means that you are carrying out uh, a lot of information uh, stuck on top of each other. So sometimes happen that before executing a unit of code uh, are called a lot of inner function and this adds uh, some overheads. Also, uh, in object-oriented, it's difficult to uh, create an engine that is capable of being multi-threading, especially when you want to create a multi-thread of your scripts. It's really difficult. Instead, what ECS provides is to create the application uh, with a flat structure. But before to dive into it, let's do one step behind. ECS means Entity Component System. And the entity is just one plain object. And you can imagine it like a plain box where it is possible to put some functionality inside. And this functionality can be represented by the components. Components are just objects that carry information. And then there are the systems that are the actual uh, algorithm that perform some operation on the components. And thanks to this structure, the engine uh, is able to perform some operation. This means that for each thing, uh, for example, for creating a window on screen, a window component, and then for managing the rendering, this, the engine will need the rendering component. Then, for uh, managing the transformation, the engine will need the transform component. Then you can see that for each functionality of the engine, you have to register these systems. While in the object-oriented uh, engines, you carry all this functionality inside uh, the engine by default, so even if you don't use them, you have this inside and these add some overheads. Instead, in ECS, uh, if you don't need a specific functionality, you simply don't register it, and uh, the game engine will not processing it at all, so you don't have any overhead and you don't waste any performance of your machine. Another thing to say is that when you create, when you need extra functionality in object-oriented game engines, what happens is that they provide sometimes a way to register scripts or a way to register scripts uh, even in low level. But the, the scripts follow uh, a pattern decided by the game engine that uh, has a lot of overhead because you have the processing that 
call uh, an algorithm that handle all these scripts that then call the scripts that then call the functionalities of the engine instead with ECS when you define even a script you are roughly providing a new system and since the system are executed along with the systems already defined by the engine you have no overhead in fact we can say that in object oriented game engine the minimal requirements uh, to run an engine are a tree of algorithm that runs and check the inputs runs the physics run the transformation systems the rendering system and so on instead on the other end the ECS uh, doesn't force nothing and the minimal things that runs is just the system dispatcher so if the system dispatcher is void the running is completely void while in object oriented the multi-trading must be assigned by the programmer in ECS what happens is that uh, the dispatcher uh, by checking uh, the resources used by the system is able to understand by its own what are the system that can run in parallel and this is much more convenient because you don't need to take a study on what can be paralyzed or what can't be paralyzed like in object oriented but you just simply create the system and the dispatcher will do this for you so thanks to the fact that in ECS um, everything can be customized easily without changing the, en the core engine and also is possible uh, to have multi-thread by default these are the main reason because ECS is getting more popular nowadays so that's it this is Andrea thanks for watching this video see you next week bye <laughs>